My fiancé fell in love with his intern secretary and insisted on breaking off our engagement. I kindly advised him, she can't help you become the heir of the Clark family. Why not wait until you take charge first? The secretary felt humiliated and jumped to her death in public. Five years later, the first thing he did after becoming the heir was to divorce me, causing my family to be ruined. This is what you owe Corrine. When I woke up again, it was my 22nd birthday party. People asked me what my wish was. I hope Mason Clark and Miss Corrine live a long and happy life together. Dean! Wiss Novel reminds you to click the subscribe button in the bottom right corner to read the complete novel. I died on a rainy day. I could have seen the hills covered in maple leaves, but Mason couldn't wait any longer. I rolled down the steps, leaving a trail of blood. He still wasn't satisfied. He personally pushed me down the stairs, over and over again. I was in so much pain that I could barely make a sound, but I still asked him, unwilling to give up. Why? I didn't understand. Our families had always been on good terms, and we had grown up together as childhood sweethearts. For over a decade, my family did everything to help him secure his position in the family and become the heir. But he set a trap to ensnare my father, causing my family to go bankrupt, and my father died of a heart attack. Why, Mason? I clung desperately to his clothes. His face was frighteningly pale. It was clearly him who caused my family to be destroyed, but his expression made it seem as if I had wronged him. This is what you owe Corrine. He gritted his teeth. Corrine? The name felt somewhat unfamiliar, and it took me some effort to recall it. Along with the pure and delicate face behind the name. I couldn't help but laugh out loud. Five years. So, in these five years, Mason had never forgotten her. He blamed her death on me on the entire Baker group. Mason Clark, you really are a idiot. Before I could say the last word, Mason had already gripped my throat tightly. The oxygen in my chest was slowly being drained. Blood trickled from the corner of my mouth. It looked just like the red leaves covering the hills. Mina, are you having a headache again? The cold rain disappeared. The hard floor disappeared. The autumn sky was clear, and guests were gathered. It was my 22nd birthday party, also my engagement party with Mason Clark. It must have been divine intervention. I blinked, and when I opened my eyes again, I had actually been reborn. Not only was I not dead, but I had also returned to being 22. This year, the Baker Group's business was flourishing, and my father had entered the top 10 on the Forbes list. This year, I was not yet engaged to Mason. She should be having a headache. A gloating voice came from behind. Yesterday, Mason Clark admitted in front of the media that his secretary is his girlfriend. My best friend turned to go over, but I stopped her. Mason did more than just acknowledge that Corrine was his girlfriend. Three months ago, he went out of town for business, was drugged by a competitor, and Corrine saved him, spending a passionate night with him. After that, Mason suddenly realized she was his true love and wanted to give her a title and marry her including yesterday, they had already been photographed by the media three times. Mina, don't listen to the media's nonsense. You and Mason have been childhood sweethearts for so many years. I looked at my best friend and shook my head. Her words came to an abrupt halt. Of course, I knew what she wanted to say. A week ago, I woke up at home and realized that I was reborn. A week's time was enough for me to sort through the events of the past five years. Mina. My best friend suddenly reminded me, Mason is coming over. I looked up and saw Mason walking towards me, surrounded by a crowd of people. The murmurs behind me immediately disappeared. Mason Clark and I grew up together. When we were five or six years old, our families had already arranged our marriage. Since childhood, whenever anyone bullied me, he was the first to stand up for me. When he made mistakes and got punished, I was the first to plead for him. Before today, no one doubted that I was Mason's true love. But today, on my 22nd birthday, he brought another woman. Corrine, thin and delicate, clung to his side like a fragile flower. Mason smiled and whispered something intimately in her ear. She looked at me, her expression turning from panic to distress in an instant, and took a few big steps forward. She bowed to me at a 90-degree angle. 
Indeed, it was exactly like my past life. Even the teardrop on her eyelash was the same. In my past life, it was her pitiful appearance that beguiled Mason. Having grown up in a big and noble family, I was used to marriages of convenience for the sake of benefits and never expected love. Her appearance made my heart ache, but it wasn't enough to make me lose my mind. When Mason wanted to break off the engagement, I didn't cry or make a fuss. I just reminded him of the long-standing relationship between our families and advised him a bit. Kareen is just an orphan and doesn't have any work experience, even though you too. But marriage, your grandfather would never agree to it. It would only cause her trouble. Mason, you might as well keep her outside for now, and in the future. I spoke vaguely. In the future, when you become the heir of the Clark Group, won't you be able to decide for yourself? Just a few words to save her from trouble, but it brought disaster upon me. In my past life, as soon as I saw Corrine bow, I hurried to help her up. This time, I just watched coldly. Seeing no one pay attention to her, she unhesitatingly knelt down and started kowtowing to me. Bang, bang, each knock resounded clearly. My best friend tugged at my sleeve. There were many guests today, all looking this way. I squeezed her hand. What's the rush? Corrine. Mason's face was already looking unhappy. In just a moment, Corrine's forehead was already bleeding. With her tears about to fall, she looked even more pitiful. She glanced back at Mason, then at me, bit her lip, and continued kowtowing. I leisurely picked up the wine glass from the table. Suddenly, I was curious, how far could she pretend? That's right. Corrine was pretending. Her pitiful appearance was an act, and even in my past life, her jumping off the building to take her own life was faked. On the deserted rooftop, I heard her oriole-like voice with my own ears. She cried and begged a man. Brother, as an orphan, if I don't use some bitter tricks, how would Mr. Clark remember me? Brother, help me again, use another bitter trick. Brother, I really like Mr. Clark, but with my status, his family would never agree to our marriage. But Mr. Clark promised to marry me, I have to do something more to make him feel guilty for me. Brother, just help me one more time. As long as I pretend to jump off the building for him, Mr. Clark will remember his debt to me for the rest of his life. She was such a good actress. She fooled Mason, fooled me. Fooled all the media. I once asked Mason why he cared so much about Corrine. I was born the eldest son of the Clark family, everyone flatters me, pampers me. They respect me, love me, but it's all because of my family's money and status. Even you, Mina, if I weren't a Clark, would you still marry me? His words left me speechless at the time. If he and I weren't from equally prominent families, we wouldn't have grown up together, let alone be engaged or married. Only Corrine, only she truly loves me and is willing to give up everything for me. Mina, such pure love, how could I refuse? I was almost convinced by him. As the daughter of the Baker family, I had always been cautious with my words and actions. I had to consider my parents, my family, I indeed wouldn't easily give up everything for someone. We all overlooked another possibility. Whether Mason was drugged or poisoned to near death. From the very beginning, Corrine had made up her mind. She wanted to climb this high branch. Enough! Mason's shout brought me back to my senses from my memories. The room fell silent. Corrine trembled all over, raising her head timidly, her eyes pleading as she looked at me. The meaning was clear. She had ruined my engagement, making me the laughingstock of our circle, and she felt deeply guilty. If I didn't speak, she would never stop. Fine. Then let's continue. I raised my eyebrows slightly and continued sipping the red wine in my glass. Corrine bit her lip and was about to kneel again. Mason suddenly took two steps forward and, smack. He knocked the wine glass from my hand. Mina Baker, don't go too far. Mina Baker, is this the grace of the Baker family? Mason's face was cold and the surrounding voices fell silent in shock. He lifted Corrine, tenderly touching her forehead, Mina, apologize. If you apologize to her now, I'll pretend nothing happened. I almost laughed out loud. It was my fault for being too naive back then. In our last life. When I discovered Corrine's lies, I called Mason that very day to tell him everything I had seen. I warned him to be wary of Corrine. 
The next day, Corrine jumped from the building and died. Truly died. The media said she jumped to her death because she never had a proper status. Mason told me, luckily you warned me, or I would have been deceived by her. After that incident. For so many years, I thought he had forgotten Corrine. After all, he always hated being deceived the most. Until right before my death. It turned out that when he said deceived by her, he meant me. Mina, are you mute? Corrine did nothing wrong, it was me who wanted to break off the engagement. Apologize to her, and I won't hold the injury on her head against you. I looked at Mason and couldn't help but curl my lips. I must have been blind. I always thought he was smart. The elders are inside, right? I turned to ask a passing waiter. I walked elegantly from outside the party to the banquet hall. Mason followed closely behind, what are you going to do? Are you going to complain to the elders? I ignored him. All the way to the door, Mason was still right behind me. Mina, don't think that just because you're a baker, you can get engaged to me. I've already agreed to marry Corrine, and I won't marry you. I turned to look at Mason. As he said, he was born privileged. His life had been too smooth. He had no idea what a capable wife would mean to him. Perhaps my cold look startled Mason for a moment. Just then, at the entrance of the banquet hall, a voice from afar said, Mina, what's going on with you two? The banquet hall was full of guests. I bowed slightly, Grandpa Clark, today is my birthday, and I have a wish to make to you. Mason and Miss Corrine are in love, and I am very envious. But I don't want to ruin their good match. Grandpa Clark, I want to break off my engagement with Mason. The room fell silent instantly. Before evening, the news had spread throughout the circle. The marriage between the Clark and Baker families was probably off. Mason Clark had publicly broken off the engagement in front of the media, making it widely known. Today, the eldest daughter of the Baker family actually broke off the engagement at her own birthday party, in front of everyone. It was said that Mason's expression at that moment was quite a sight. At this time, in the banquet hall, the head of the Clark family directly picked up a teapot and smashed it on his head, causing him to bleed. Absurd! I stood nearby, getting splashed with water. When we got back home, who told you to make a scene outside? My father turned and looked at me. He was furious, breaking off the engagement, huh? This was something your grandfather and the Clark family had agreed upon long ago, and you just break it off in front of so many people? My back was straight, and I didn't blink an eye. We are currently collaborating with the Clark family. If the engagement is broken off now, what will happen if Clark Corporation withdraws from the current project? You go and apologize to the Clark family right away, saying it was a moment of impulsiveness and you spoke without thinking. I'm not going. I said firmly. Not going? What do you intend to do if you don't go? Break off the engagement. You. My father pointed at me, I think you must be crazy. He slammed the door and left. I was indeed crazy. If it weren't for the things I experienced in my past life, I wouldn't have easily broken off the engagement with Mason. Since childhood, I was taught to prioritize the family, and having enjoyed the family's resources, I had to contribute to the family. Since I was destined to marry for the sake of the family, a familiar marriage partner was better than a stranger. The Baker family's century-old foundation needed collaboration to advance further. And Mason Clark was a good choice. Among the Clark family of this generation, there were many outstanding individuals, and with Mason's father passing away early, he was the easiest to manipulate. Supporting Mason to be the heir would certainly maximize benefits. So in my past life, when Mason rose to power and proposed a major project with the Baker Group, my father didn't hesitate to invest a large amount of the company's liquid funds. But Mason caught us off guard. It turned out that collaborating with a fool was doomed to fail. Mina, what did that scumbag Mason say? My best friend asked over the video call. In the past, I often chatted with her, and once I started talking about him, I couldn't stop. This time, I only had four words. Stop talking about him. I tugged at the corner of my lips. Mina! My best friend was anxious. Mina, what exactly did Mason Clark say? You mustn't forgive him easily. 
I interrupted her, I'll talk to you later, I have something urgent to do. I picked up a particularly special gift box from the pile of presents, which contained a jade necklace from an auction six months ago. I picked up the necklace, got up, and put on my coat. Mina, what's wrong? It's so late, are you going out? Mom, I have something to do. I'll be back soon. I closed the door, turned around, and walked towards my car. The me from these days was certainly not the same as the me from a few days ago. The Mina Baker who still had hopes for Mason Clark a few days ago was already dead. What remained now was a Mina solely focused on revenge. The man before me was thin and pale. A single mole at the corner of his eye, but it was strikingly red. He looked quite different from how I remembered. I was observing him, and he was observing me. His black eyes seemed indifferent. Miss Baker, long time no see. You are still as beautiful and charming as ever. His voice was like pearls dropping. I smiled at him, Mr. Clark, your reputation precedes you. The corners of his lips lifted slightly, and he gave a faint smile. We both knew these were just polite words. The flowers Miss Baker sent have bloomed. He glanced at the window. I placed the gift box from my bag in the middle of the table. I received Mr. Clark's necklace. I picked up the water cup on the table. He reached for the gift box. I pulled the box back. His hand paused, and I looked at him with a smile. His name was Liam Clark, the son of the fourth uncle of the Clark family and the cousin of Mason Clark. My father was right. The engagement between Mason Clark and me was decided by my grandfather and his grandfather, and it wasn't something that could be easily annulled. But I knew very well that this marriage had to be annulled. On the first day I woke up after being reborn, I tossed and turned, searching my memories for this person. High status, strong abilities, and most importantly, he died young. Strictly speaking, he was the most suitable heir to the Clark family. The Clark family should have been his. But he had a car accident at the age of 18. Although he was saved, his health had never been good. Therefore, the position of heir was destined to be out of his reach. In my previous life, he died at the age of 25. But he clearly had ambition. He had never married and had no children. When he passed away, the inheritance he left behind exceeded half of the Clark group. It's hard to imagine what the future of the Clark group would have been like if he had lived a few more years or had been healthy. What does Miss Baker mean by this? Liam Clark's dark eyes looked at me. I despise fools the most. I raised an eyebrow at him. Before we cooperate, let me see what you can do. Liam laughed. This time it was a genuine laugh, adding a bit of color to his pale face. He slowly raised his cup and took a sip of tea. Cooperating with someone unfamiliar was something Mina would never have done in the past. But I needed a partner. And a wise one at that. The circle was very calm. Online news spread for a few days and then died down. How could the marriage alliance between the Baker family and the Clark family be cancelled? Mason was very pleased. But his grandfather, old Mr. Clark, always had a stern face when he saw him, so he went on a business trip with Kareen. Since he wasn't in City A, he naturally wouldn't notice the frequent cooperation between the Baker family and Liam's company within a short month. Or even if he were in City A, he wouldn't care. Mason's company didn't lack projects. Even if it did, the Baker group would help him. He also didn't notice the quiet personnel changes within the company. After all, they were just ordinary employees, insignificant. Is that all? The messages between Mason and me had turned into messages between Liam and me. But the physically weak Liam didn't talk much. He didn't reply to this message. In a few days, a popular drama suddenly appeared online. A nobleman was saved by an orphan girl and promised to marry her. But the orphan girl was of common origin, and the nobleman came from a prestigious family, which couldn't accept such a mistress. Of course, in the end, the two broke through societal barriers and stayed together. At the end of the drama, the nobleman gave a passionate speech. So what if she is an orphan? Why can't a girl without the support of a wealthy family be my wife? Gratitude and repayment are the qualities of a gentleman. If one cannot be a gentleman, how can one lead a family? 
The plot of this drama was so familiar that as it became popular, online discussions quickly escalated. Why can't ordinary people and rich people be together? If a person cannot repay kindness, how can they manage a company? Mason marrying his secretary was simply a perfect love story. Overnight, Mason and Kareen became famous online. Netizens pleaded for them to get married as soon as possible. So Mason returned to City A and attended the company's new product launch, holding Kareen in his arms, looking triumphant. What a coincidence! Using public opinion and stock prices as leverage to force old Mr. Clark to compromise. And, killing three birds with one stone. Cutting off Mason's future, blocking the Baker Group's retreat, and creating a rift between Mason and old Mr. Clark. What a beautiful love story, just a trick to fool the netizens. Old Mr. Clark would never suspect the reclusive Liam, but would think all these were Mason's doing. As for Mason, in his excitement, he would probably think that God was helping him. How is it? Not bad. Just that? I smiled. I had someone send a top-quality tea cake for Liam. Repay kindness with kindness. With an added message. Liam, why not strike while the iron is hot? Miss Baker, have you thought it through? Of course. Since we are cooperating, the first move after my rebirth must be decisive. For Mason and Corrine's public display of affection, my best friend cursed for three whole days. This time, not even a whisper was heard in our circle. Everyone was sure that the engagement between the Baker and Clark families was going to be called off. They were all waiting to see me make a fool of myself. My engagement was indeed called off. But they didn't get to see me become a joke. It was said that the Clark Group building was bustling that day. Mason, with his secretary and a bunch of media reporters, stormed into the meeting room. Old Mr. Clark and my dad were discussing a cooperation project, and everyone stood up when they came in. The Baker family had never been so insulted in a city. Mr. Clark, since Mason insists on calling off the engagement, let's annul the engagement between our families. Then, he led the Baker group people out of the meeting room in a grand exit. Just for a secretary, it had come to such an embarrassing situation. Old Mr. Clark was furious and frustrated. But at this point, no matter how much he disagreed, he had no other choice. Just as the rumors online said, the Clark and Baker families were likely to become enemies, and several families were already preparing to ally with the Bakers. Losing cooperation with the Bakers meant the Clark family lost a strong ally, possibly turning the Clark and Baker families into adversaries. In the midst of this stalemate, an unexpected person appeared. Actually, I specifically met with Liam Clark that day. Dress nicely. Don't mind my dad's serious demeanor. He's actually very superficial. So, as the internet spread, when that person appeared, he was as charming and elegant as a painting. Like an immortal descending to the mortal world. When he sat down, everyone realized. This was the once brilliant, now almost forgotten, recluse. And when he spoke, it was even more astonishing. Grandpa, Mr. Baker, I want to marry Miss Baker. One sentence broke the deadlock. Old Mr. Clark remembered his once prodigious grandson, though his health was poor, modern medical advancements were significant. My dad suddenly found Liam's demeanor much more pleasing than Mason, who seemed to have the brains of a donkey. Old Mr. Clark and my dad exchanged glances and understood each other. Only Mason, it was said, had a very dramatic expression, almost standing up in shock. Before he could speak, my engagement with Liam was settled. The two families immediately announced my engagement to Liam. At the same time, they announced the wedding date of Mason and Kareen. The matter was thus concluded. When the engagement was announced, I was unusually happy. The first move was so smooth, beyond my expectations. It showed that choosing the right partner is crucial. Just after the engagement was announced, Mason came. Finally able to marry his true love, having his wish fulfilled, instead of flaunting his love with Corrine, he came to give me trouble? I had the servant tell him, Mason Clark and dogs are not allowed inside. Mason was furious in the yard, Mina Baker, you must be crazy. I kindly came to remind you, Liam is just a useless people. If you know what's good for you, you'd better find a way to call off the marriage. Or you'll regret it. I was in a good mood, not even bothering to lift an eyebrow for him. I just slowly opened my phone and saw the message from Liam. 
When to make the second move, my partner, indeed more motivated than the one outside. I typed, no rush. Wait for a good show. In my past life, before Mason killed me, he actually said a lot to me. But I was in so much pain at the time that I couldn't remember much of it. The most memorable thing he said was, If it weren't for you, if it weren't for your Baker family, Kareen and I could have grown old together. In this life, without me, without the Baker family. I want to see how he and Kareen can grow old together. In the tea house, the aroma of tea lingered. There are problems with the overseas project. It's a good thing that young Mr. Clark is going personally, but is it appropriate for him to bring that secretary? Why wouldn't it be appropriate? That secretary. Miss Kareen and young Mr. Clark haven't married yet, but their engagement has been announced. I heard she's also a top student in business management, she might be able to help. There is never a shortage of gossip in the company. Is this the good show you mentioned? Liam, who was sitting opposite me, asked. Manson went abroad this time, bringing along his secretary fiancé. For a while, the company was buzzing with discussions. I raised an eyebrow and sipped my tea. Of course, there's more. Mina is such a beauty, it's fortunate someone is blind. Liam suddenly said with a smile. I looked up. This man indeed looked good, especially when he smiled, the small mole at the corner of his eye added a unique charm. For the past few months, we often had tea together, and he knew when to advance and retreat in conversation, making our interactions pleasant. But. My gaze shifted downwards, he was indeed quite thin. Seeing me looking at him, Liam glanced at my teacup and leaned over to pour me some tea. A wealthy young man, in business, yet carrying an air of scholarly elegance. So quiet today? As he poured tea, he glanced at me. It's not that I'm quiet. I was thinking of Mason's words, Liam, he's just a useless person. Hey. I directly grabbed his collar, you, can you have children? His eyelids twitched. He slowly put down the teapot in his hand. He looked up, his eyes deep, and the mole at the corner of his eye was a striking red. He pinched my chin. Want to try? I really did want to try. If Liam couldn't have children, wouldn't my whole plan be for nothing? But, we couldn't try in the tea house. A month later, the show I invited Liam to watch finally premiered. Mason went abroad to handle the overseas project, bringing along his deeply loved secretary. Unexpectedly, they angered the local thugs, who threatened to teach them a lesson. In a panic, Mason had someone send Kareen back to the country first. It would have been fine if Kareen returned alone, but no one expected Mason to come back too. Kareen lied to Mason, saying she was scared and asked him to send her back to the country. Mason then returned to City A with her. They threatened us, saying they'd make us suffer. We were almost dead, how could I leave Mason there to die alone? In the past life, Corrine pitifully explained to the company people. A recently graduated orphan without any background. Everyone was speechless. Since ancient times, a defeated general should still hold the banner high. Mason went abroad to handle the project, not only did he offend the local thugs recklessly, but he also ran away himself. Moreover, they were just trying to scare him, the details could still be negotiated. In the past life, my father suppressed this matter. That local thug happened to know my father well, and before Mason even left the airport, my father got the news. He intercepted Mason overnight and sent him back, preventing the news from leaking out. But in this life, my father was unwilling to help him anymore. As soon as Corrine and Mason left the airport, the Clark group exploded in chaos. All kinds of dissatisfaction with Mason spread throughout the company. Old Mr. Clark was furious, cursing how he could have such a foolish grandson. In fact, public opinion can be easily swayed by a few leading figures. But such things can't be done openly. It was only later that Mason realized that over the past six months, his people had been replaced or fired. Except for Kareen, there was no one in the company who was his own. He couldn't lower his pride to ask others for help. He could only watch as the public opinion continued to ferment. Prepare for the next move. I sent a message to Liam. I want to expose Corrine's fake suicide attempt by jumping off the building. 
Mason has always firmly believed that Corrine's love for him was pure and flawless. In the past life, Corrine tricked him into returning home together, and afterwards, he only sighed lightly. Corrine just cares too much about me. In this life, without someone to clean up after him, I wonder if he can still say such things? Liam had already planted some people in Mason's company to set up a small scheme, making Corrine reveal her true colors. It wasn't a difficult task. I originally planned to make some fuss over the overseas project to scare her a bit. Who knew that before I even started, someone would walk right into the trap. I heard that evening. Mason had been scolded by netizens, by his subordinates, and by the old Mr. Clark recently, feeling extremely depressed. He hadn't been to the home he shared with his beloved Corrine for five consecutive days. The company's rooftop had already been equipped with several high-pixel cameras, covering every angle. That day, Corrine was sitting trembling on the outer edge of the rooftop railing, crying while explaining to Mason. It was me who was ignorant and implicated Mason, I am willing to atone. Mason, I love you, in the next life I will repay your deep affection. Ah. Then she jumped off the building. Mason, deeply in love, of course, had to hold her tightly. But whether it was Corrine jumping too slowly, or Mason's strength too great. In the end, it was Mason who fell, while Corrine was hanging by a rope on the outer wall. Fortunately, someone had already called the police, and there was a cushion laid out at the bottom. I heard Mason's expression when he saw Corrine hanging on the outer wall was quite a sight. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see it. Since then, the Clark family hasn't had a moment of peace. In a few days, Mason was making a fuss about calling off the engagement again. My mother taught me from a young age, as a woman, especially a woman with a family background. Love is the least trustworthy thing. You can only love a person seven parts, leaving three parts. Mason, being a child of the Clark family, wasn't he taught this? Maybe. Or maybe, he was spoiled from a young age. Because his father was the eldest son of the old Mr. Clark, always deeply loved. When his father was alive, he was the most cherished grandson of the Clark family. Until Mason's father passed away, and Liam started to shine. Mason was born to naturally occupy all of the Clark family's resources. And naturally believed that everyone and everything should revolve around him. Whoever he wanted to marry, he had to marry. Whoever he didn't want to marry, no one could cling to him. The old Mr. Clark was so angry he fainted and was directly admitted to the ICU. It caused a huge uproar. The one who wanted to marry was him, the wedding was just around the corner, and now he's the one saying he won't marry. How would the company's people view him? How would they see this young Mr. Clark? When the old Mr. Clark woke up in the hospital, he told him to get out. And Mason got out to the house where I was staying outside. At this time, I had just tried with Liam and didn't want to move at all. But the security let Mason up, and he pounded on the door so hard it was deafening. When I opened the door, I finally got to see the marvelous expression on Mason's face. Speaking of Liam, his personality also had a certain sharpness unique to those born with a silver spoon. Seeing me about to get up, he insisted on biting my neck twice. Mason obviously saw it. His eyes were filled with shock and surprise, and there was even a hint of complexity. It took him a while to find his voice, Mina, you, you too. I adjusted my collar and tilted my head to look at him. What's wrong with being with my fiancé? Mason suddenly got angry. You two aren't even married yet, don't you have any shame? Brother, that's not appropriate. Just as I was about to speak, Liam's voice came from the room, you've done everything with that secretary. What about us? Mason didn't expect Liam to still be in my house, and his face turned red and then white. I'm not like you, breaking off an engagement with one today and returning another tomorrow. When I choose someone, it's for life. Mason's face turned pale. And, Mina is not for you to call. You should call her sister-in-law. Mason's lips trembled, but he couldn't say a word. I thought he was going to call me sister-in-law. Boring. I closed the door. Mina. Mason held the door, Mina, Corrine lied to me. Mina, it was her meddling that made us end up like this. Mina, listen to me, a few days ago I had a dream, and in the dream, it was me marrying you. Honey. Liam directly changed the way he addressed me, the blanket is cold, I'm weak, and I'm cold. 
Mason, why don't you come in and talk with your cousin? Mason shut his mouth. I closed the door. Mason must have been deeply affected because he fell ill after going back. There was no more drama to watch at the Clark house. But the family started preparing for my and Liam's wedding, so I wasn't idle. That day, while I was calculating the dowry, an unexpected guest arrived. Corrine appeared in front of me looking pitiful, crying her heart out. Miss Baker, please go see Mason. I sidestepped, pulling away the corner of my skirt that she almost grabbed. Miss Baker, Mason is seriously ill, he can't wake up no matter what, and in his dreams, he keeps calling your name. If you go see him, maybe he will wake up. I looked down at her from above, not really wanting to engage. Miss Baker, you and Mr. Clark grew up together, please go see him. Corrine started bowing again, it was my wishful thinking. As long as Miss Baker nods, I am willing to just be Mason's mistress and never come in your way. Miss Baker, I'm begging you. Just as I frowned, a cold shout came from beside me. Are the security guards eating for nothing? How can any Tom, Dick, or Harry get in here? Ever since the housemaid called Mason a dog, they've become more outspoken. Security! Throw her out! After Corrine was thrown out, she was never let back in. This was originally a trivial matter, but the more I thought about what she said, the more something felt off. Mason fell ill and called my name? He wasn't that deeply in love with me. Moreover, last time he said something about dreaming of marrying me. Could it be? I was reborn, which is already strange enough, so nothing is impossible. But, if he remembers the previous life, where should I place my third move? I once boasted to Liam that if he cooperated with me, it would only take three steps to help him reclaim what was rightfully his. In my previous life, I died so tragically that I could never let Mason comfortably become the heir let alone control Clark Group. I had someone keep an eye on the hospital. Mason had already woken up and seemed fine. Nothing major happened in the Clark family. Mason did not insist on breaking off the engagement anymore, instead, he postponed his wedding with Corrine. This made me even more uneasy. Mason's personality is such that he won't stop until he achieves his goal. He postponed the wedding, could it be because? He also knows that time is running out. My third move was planned for a night a month later. That night, the old Mr. Clark passed away quietly. Since ancient times, the night when the head of a family passes away is the most crucial night. But this was an exception for Mason. He had no competitors. In my previous life, old Mr. Clark passed away in his sleep and was only discovered by the servants in the early morning. Mason inherited the entire Clark family smoothly and without incident. But in this life, there's Liam. And me. As long as my third move is made well and accurately, kicking Mason out of the game wouldn't be difficult. I prepared everything according to plan. Had a heart-to-heart -heart talk with my father. Plotted together with Liam. The old Clark mansion remained normal. Mason still went to work and came back as usual, and Corrine kept crying and making a fuss. Soon, a month passed. As night fell, I sent a message to Mason. Midnight, meet at the park in the west of the city. Mason and I actually have some beautiful memories together. Before Corrine appeared, Mason would accompany me to set off fireworks on every birthday. When I was young, I didn't know that making wishes should be done silently, so I would say them out loud. Within a few days, the things I wished for would be delivered from the Clark family. As I grew older, I stopped saying my wishes out loud, but Mason could always find out my preferences through my friends. When I arrived at the park, he was already there. With just one look, I knew my guess was correct. The young, inexperienced Mason and the seasoned, authoritative Chairman Mason had completely different expressions. Mina, it's been many years since we came here, he said, looking at the deep, bottomless cliff. At this time, naturally, no one was setting off fireworks. I remember the year you slid down from there, he pointed to a small hill not far away, and cried out loud in fear. I was the one who pulled you up. Mr. Clark, you have a great memory, I smiled, I don't remember that. So, as soon as you came back, you planned to stay away from me, right? Otherwise? I glanced at him and said, wait to be killed by you again? Mason raised an eyebrow. His voice lowered, Mina, I wronged you. 
It was Sadie. Mason's most trusted assistant. It wasn't until I investigated later that I found out Sadie, Corrine's best friend, was a victim in a project years ago. After learning about Corrine's plan to fake her suicide, Sadie swapped the rope that was supposed to hold her, framing the Baker family. I trusted you, so I didn't save her in time, but she really died. I didn't want to listen. There were strange circumstances back then, no need to think much. But knowing the truth, what difference does it make? What shouldn't have been done, he had already done. Even if she jumped to her death because I advised you not to marry her, so what? I looked at Mason coldly. Mason, whether to marry her or not, the decision was in your hands. You saw that Grandpa Clark firmly opposed it, and you wavered, didn't you? But because of my well-intentioned advice, you ruined my family. I thought. I don't want to hear it. The early spring night was still somewhat cold. Mason looked at me deeply and suddenly smiled. I know where the root of the problem lies. He pulled me forward and stopped at the edge of the cliff. He had actually brought Corrine too. Her hands and feet were tied, her mouth gagged, and she was hanging over the cliff. Corrine's eyes were already red from crying. When she saw us, she whimpered, and tears fell again. People who deceive me deserve to die. In almost the blink of an eye, Mason cut the rope that was holding Corrine. Without a shred of mercy. This was his so-called true love. The person in front of me was probably not just the Mason from five years ago. When he killed me back then, his face still looked pale. Today, with this push, his expression didn't change. I clenched my fists tightly. Are you satisfied now? I turned my gaze away. Mina, I know I was wrong. All these years, I regretted every day. I did it for you. Shut up. I didn't want to hear another word from him. Mason's eyes darkened again. Then he laughed. Two in the morning, is this the time you've been waiting for? At two in the morning, in my past life, it was the time the coroner announced that Grandpa Clark had truly passed away. Mina, do you think without the Baker family, you and that Liam can win? I'll let you see with your own eyes who wins and who loses today. Mason dragged me into the car and drove straight to the Clark family mansion. As soon as we entered the gates of the Clark family mansion, Mason's phone rang. He answered it, and the person on the other end seemed to be informing him that Grandpa Clark had passed away. Everyone in the Clark family and the Clark group was already under Mason's control. The servants in the mansion looked panicked, and they greeted Mason with utmost respect. The area in front of Grandpa Clark's bedroom was packed with people. Mason's bodyguards and thugs surrounded the mansion, making it impenetrable. When they saw Mason, they greeted him, Mr. Clark. Who won and who lost was clear at a glance. Liam was restrained by two bodyguards. The people I sent to help Liam were also subdued by Mason's men. What a mess. Mason extended his hand to me, come, my lady. I just stared at him. Mason reached out closer, his expression devout, Mina, in this lifetime, I want you to be the happiest woman. I glanced at the room full of people standing densely, then looked at the lilies by the window. No better opportunity. I looked at Mason and tilted my head slightly. Did he win? Mason frowned, looked around, a trace of surprise flashed in his eyes. Why aren't the old man's confidants here? Have they discovered something? Bastard! At this moment, a loud shout came from behind. Mason looked in disbelief at the figure leaning on a cane, appearing at the door. Old Mr. Clark. My third move was not actually disrupted by Mason's rebirth. Because I knew, most people in the world like to judge others by their own standards. Especially now that he is the experienced leader who has weathered the ups and downs of the business world. In his eyes, tonight, I would undoubtedly use the full power of the Baker family to help Liam seize the initiative, change old Mr. Clark's will, and push Liam to the top. He wouldn't consider a second possibility. Because he was also eagerly waiting for this night, the day he would return to the pinnacle. But I wouldn't let him have his way. From the beginning, my third move was never about seizing power. Old Mr. Clark was very good, and he had great respect for the Baker family. Since I knew he would pass away silently tonight, why not prepare in advance? 
Mason had only been reborn for a month, so he might not know that for more than half a year, old Mr. Clark had been going to the hospital for weekly checkups. The supplements he used were far better than before. Old Mr. Clark's health was actually much better than in the previous life. From the beginning, I just wanted old Mr. Clark to become displeased with Mason. The first move was like this, and so was the second move. The third move was to create various illusions, making Mason think that the Baker family wanted to support Liam and slowly take over the Clark family business. Once he made a move, coupled with old Mr. Clark's previous dissatisfaction with him, abandoning him was inevitable. Of course, this is where we must thank modern medicine. Otherwise, I really wouldn't know how to set up this scheme. So in the original plan, old Mr. Clark was supposed to fake death tonight. With Mason's rebirth, the only additional thing I did was arrange for him to go to the park. If he were at the Clark family residence, he might have noticed something wrong early on. Of course, today's events also had the cooperation of old Mr. Clark. Old Mr. Clark trusted Liam. Liam said that Mason, due to previous events, wanted to take over the Clark family, so why not give it a try? He also thought it wouldn't hurt to try. The next time I saw Mason was three months later, in the detention center. Spring turned into summer, and it started raining from the sky. It was very similar to the day I died. The detention center was extremely damp and cold. Mason had lost a lot of weight. He was wearing handcuffs, dressed in thin prison clothes, and sitting opposite me through the glass. It wouldn't have been this miserable originally. But he was reborn and used ruthless methods to win over the Clark family's subordinates. Old Mr. Clark was extremely disappointed in him, refusing to see him even on his deathbed. Yes, despite going to the best hospital, seeing the best doctors, and using the best medicine, old Mr. Clark's life was only extended by three months. Seeing me sitting opposite, Mason looked up. His eyes lit up. He wanted to reach for my hand through the glass. The cold touch kept his hand on the other side. Mina, you still won't forgive me. I couldn't help but laugh again. Mina, it was so hard for both of us to be reborn. This is a chance from God for us to start over. I don't see it that way. Bringing us back might be because someone was wronged. Mason's eyes dimmed again. Mason, do you know why we never had children all those years together in our past life? Mason's gaze fell on my lower abdomen. Because when I married you, your position in the Clark family was unstable, and you needed support. The other members of the Clark family were eyeing us covetously, it really wasn't a good time to get pregnant. It wasn't too late to have children once Mason could fully control the Clark family. My father, my family, helped him so much. But actually, we did have a child. Mason's pupils shrank suddenly. When you killed me, I was already three months pregnant. Why did you? Why didn't I tell you, right? I moved closer and looked up at him. Why would I want to have a child with someone like you? Mason's face turned gray inch by inch, showing a rare look of pain. Mason, I was really worried you wouldn't come back. I was afraid you would think you lost unfairly. Mason looked at me in shock, the pain on his face spreading to his eyes. I quietly looked at him. The end you meet today, you owe me. The rain fell harder. Liam was waiting for me outside. The road is slippery. He crouched down, I'll carry you. I lay on his back. Actually, he's really quite thin, he had just been sick recently. But I really didn't want to walk by myself. His back wasn't very warm, only the nape of his neck had a bit of warmth. But I leaned on it. Probably because we've been cooperating so well these days, because he never asks why. A few tears fell uncontrollably. He suddenly sighed, you're not unloved. Is it possible that I earned all that money just so you could marry into the Clark family and live a stable life? I jumped off his back. Hey, mission accomplished, now you're playing the emotional card with me? Trying to make me soften up and step back? Well. Liam rubbed his nose, you got me. The day Liam took power, he transferred all the shares to my name. As agreed, we would manage Clark Group together, and I would get half the shares. But it seems I misjudged him. He didn't seem enthusiastic about being the chairman. First, he humbly claimed poor health and lack of energy, letting my dad take full charge. Later, he simply stopped coming to the company altogether. 
I actually enjoyed discussing things with him. Talking with someone smart is pleasant. Six months later, I got pregnant. He cared even less about the company, often being wherever I was. When asked, he would say, your faith is there, don't worry. TSK, to think I used to call him ambitious. The child was born smoothly, a boy. Liam was very happy, holding the baby all the time. When the child started kindergarten, I thought about having a daughter. Liam actually refused. I am weak, he said. Really? With the energy he had even when sick, telling me he's weak? I knew it was because I had a major hemorrhage during childbirth, which scared him badly. Since he didn't agree, I started pushing Liam to go to the company. My dad was getting old, how could he manage the affairs of two companies? I wanted half of Clark Group's shares, not because I was very interested in the company's matters. Once bitten by a snake, ten years afraid of a well rope. Two years later, I was pregnant again. Time seemed to pass faster than ever. Sometimes, Liam would ask me, how many years do I have left to live? See, this man is shrewd. Not asking doesn't mean he can't sense my oddities. When he asked, I would answer, just till tomorrow. Hurry up, when you're gone, I'll take your money and raise a whole house full of young men. You know I can do it. In the sixth year, the second child was born, a beautiful little girl. Liam was overjoyed, saying he would leave all the Clark family's money to her. I didn't want to talk to him. Actually, by now, Liam had already lived three years longer than in his previous life. I wasn't unhappy. After all, my original plan was to keep the child and get rid of the father. Liam, who didn't need me to act personally, was simply perfect. In the seventh year, Liam took me to see the maple leaves. The hills were covered in vibrant red, full of vitality and energy. On the way down, I silently held his hand. I really wish time could stop at this moment.